In this video I'll show you how to get the estimate of the effect size if you were doing a one-way ANOVA. Uh, you might have noticed that the options menu for one-way ANOVA was a little bit limited. Now it's it's got a lot more options than a t-test. You can see these options here in my previous video on one-way ANOVA. I showed that we would uh, use these options to uh, get the descriptives, the homogeneity variance test, and the means plot. But noticeably missing is you have no option for the effect size. Often we need to have some type of an estimate of the magnitude of the treatment effect, otherwise known as the effect size. And SPSS has been really slow to the gate uh, for a number of years in terms of providing information on the uh, estimated effect size in any given study. So a lot of researchers have done things on their own. Um, SPSS is getting better at this, uh, but you, you can see that there is no option here in options for a, uh, an effect size. You also don't have any power analysis in here. So there is a way to get that, uh, and I'll show you how to do that. It's the same data set. It's the page 19 from the Walkowitz textbook uh, dorm hall example. And uh, it's a nice data set. We can use it for lots of different things. Now, in my, in my typical analysis of a one-way ANOVA, I go through this pathway. Analyze, compare means one way. But I'm going to do something different here. And instead, I'm going to use the general linear model, uh, or GLM. Uh, the general linear model is sort of the uh, workhorse of analysis of variance. It encompasses a broad range of different possibilities in terms of uh, research study design. Uh, and one way ANOVA is just one of many different types of analysis of variance. So uh, normally you would go through the general linear model to get to the more advanced types of analysis of variance, but you can use this for a one-way ANOVA. You know, you can get the same results uh, using this pathway as you do using the one-way ANOVA pathway under compare means. So the, the formulas and the procedures are actually the same, but you get more options here. So I'm going to go to Analyze ge General Linear Model, Univariate, and now we see that the pop-up window has a few more options available to us. We take our uh, independent variable, which is the dorm hall, put that here under fixed factors. What SPSS refers to as fixed factors really is the uh, dorm, uh, rather the uh, independent variable. And then we take the dependent variable, which is score, and we put it into the little window titled dependent variable. So for once it actually matches. Um, Let's go through, <laughs> excuse me, let's go through the different options. So this window I got from the options button. And you see we have lots of different things in here. I'm going to pick some of the same ones that I did before in my one-way ANOVA video. Descriptive stats, homogeneity variance test, and um, there was something else that I checked off in there, but I don't remember what. Anyway, the thing that I'm looking for here right now is the effect size. And so I click this option for the estimate of the effect size. And I also want to take a look at the observed power. So we're going to get descriptives, homogeneity variance using the Levine's test, the estimated effect size, uh, which will give us eta squared as the effect size estimate, and the observed power. I click continue. But I'm not done yet because I want to check other things here too. And you can see that uh, the post hoc button gives you a window that looks a little bit different than the one way ANOVA pop up did. I'm going to take my dependent, uh, rather independent variable, carry it over here into this window. And once you do that, once you put your independent variable over here, then all these options become activated uh, for your uh, choosing. 
but they don't become activated until you carry a variable over into this window. So I'm going to take a look at the Bonferroni. I already know what the results are from that because we did them uh, in the one-way ANOVA analysis. And um, I don't know, let's see what else we have here. Plots. Uh, this is a uh, window where you can, if you have a more complicated uh, experimental design with multiple independent variables, you'd see all those independent variables line up here under the factors window. And you could put those in at different locations here, add them down here, and it would give you a separate um, visual plot for each one. And you can see that nothing happens if I just put that one up there. Uh, let me try, you know. So the only one that it works on is for horizontal axis. We only have one independent variable. If we had a second independent variable, it would go right here, but we only have one, so it goes on top. And then add it down here. Choose whether you want a line chart or a bar chart. I'd actually prefer to have a bar chart this time. Well, let's, you can only choose one or the other. Uh, let's do the line chart uh, first because I haven't shown you in a previous video what a line chart looks like with error bars on it. So let's, uh, let's do that. The, well, the error bars will be uh, confidence interval, 95% confidence interval. So I've got a whole bunch of things uh, chosen now. I've got a visual display, I've got a post hoc test, I've got descriptive stats, I've got the table that's going to show me the uh, effect size, uh, and some other stuff like that. Now if you had another variable, let's say you had male or female at, uh, coded as a variable, you could put that in here as a covariate. And that would make it, uh, instead of analysis of variance, it would become analysis of covariance. And basically what that would do is you would, uh, it would enable you to use whatever variable you put in here uh, to uh, essentially partial out of the equation. Uh, statistically what would happen, or mathematically I should say what would happen, is that the scores of males and females, if they look different on the surface level, they'd be slightly adjusted to make them look more similar. In other words, you look at how much um, the gender or sex of the participant plays a role with the outcome factor, uh, and then you uh, essentially you, you take that variability out of the equation, so you're looking at the pure essence of dorm hall without respect to male or female uh, inhabitant of those dorm halls. You know, you can imagine a situation where uh, uh, women tend to be friendlier than men overall. Uh, and if a dorm hall had more uh, women uh, in it than other dorm halls, then that might be the friendliest dorm hall. So, you know, you wouldn't want to have that as a, a potential confounding variable. Uh, but we don't have any other variable here, so we're not going to use it. Um, let's go ahead and run it, and you can see we've got a lot of results. Uh, you've got your uh, means and standard deviations up top, just some basic descriptive stats. We've got the Levine's test. I talked about that in my previous video on One Way Nova. Uh, we'll just use this one on top, uh, and it's not significant. That's good because we don't want it to be. And then moving down, uh, we have the one-way ANOVA uh, summary table. If we had a, a second independent variable, it would also show up here. And you can see that the, the test result here is the same as when I ran it using it as a one-way ANOVA. So there's no difference here. But we do get this extra stuff on the end, and that's what I wanted. So we have the uh, eta squared, Greek letter eta. Uh, I'll write it out. It looks like kind of like an N, but with a big loopy tail. That's Greek letter eta. And what that does, what this statistic does, is it tells you uh, how much variability is being accounted for in the dependent variable by the independent variable. So in this case, eta squared is 0.269, uh, 0.269, and if we express that as a percentage, it would be 26.9%. In other words, dorm hall is accounting for about a quarter of the variability 
and the socio uh, sociability scores, the uh, friendliness scores uh, that are, have been collected in this hypothetical example. So that's kind of a lot. Um, in terms of a magnitude of a treatment effect, if you can think of uh, the dorm hall as being a treatment, yeah, it's, it's a pretty big, pretty big effect. And then we've got the observed power, which tells us that with this particular sample size and this uh, effect size that has been observed in the data, the power is high. Uh, power can go up to 1 and can go down to 0. 0.889 tells us that um, the power here was strong. Uh, that is to say, if this is the real magnitude of the effect for these dorm halls, um, the, uh, the study had a 89% uh, chance of success based on the sample size. And, uh, you know, that's really a topic for a different video, different day, probably in class. Uh, but uh, this is where you'd find your power analysis if you were uh, looking for it. And then we have the sort of standard um, uh, postdoc test. Uh, we want to compare the, the lead over here with the next one. So Turkol combined with Kirk gives you a significance value, p-value 0.07. Barely, uh, just barely non-significant. Almost got to significance, but not quite. And here's the line graph with error bars on it. Looks kind of funny. I prefer the bar chart personally. But uh, I have seen data presented like this at conferences and in publications. So if you wanted it, that's how you would get it again. That pathway is analyze general linear model univariate. And then under plots, you can find it here. Uh, where you go to line chart, uh, but let's give bar chart a whirl because I, I tend to like bar charts better. Visually speaking, I find them to be more appealing, uh, although it has exactly the same amount of information uh, contained within it. Okay, so that's, uh, that's some more options for your one-way NOVA. Thanks for watching.